So this episode, we're gonna be doing a brush up on some console APIs that exist within the Chrome DevTools console. And uh, by this, I mean the, the uh, methods and magic variables that exist that you can access when you have the DevTools console open, uh, but you might not know they exist because there's really no reason for you to know they exist unless you've dove into the documentation. It's not like there are buttons flying around or, or things that you can see that will enable these APIs. These are essentially hidden from you unless you know what magic characters to type in order to run them. So let's get started. So for this example, uh, I put together a very, very basic sign-in type form uh, and uh, wired it up with a few event listeners with some global variables and uh, a global function just so that we can experiment with. Uh, really not doing anything too exciting here. Uh, all I'm doing is getting the inputs and then I'm adding a, an event listener on the key up event to validate the uh, element with the check validity method that is available on input elements. So when we go here, so let's say I have an email address, I type in something that's not an email address, and I get a class added to this input, uh, class bad, which makes a little red uh, drop shadow up here. Nothing too exciting. Uh, if I uh, type in something that vaguely resembles an email address, I get something green. As long as I type anything into the password field, that turns green as well. Very, very basic stuff. All right, so first off, of the five, we're gonna talk about the uh, magic variables $0 through $4 and dollar underscore. So if you go to the elements panel and you select uh, just about anything here, you'll notice at the end, there is an equals equals dollar zero. So this is a visual indicator that this element is now able to be referenced via the dollar sign zero variable in the console. So if we go down to the console hole here and uh, type in dollar sign zero, we'll get this uh, element. Now dollar sign one through four is uh, basically like a stack of elements that you've selected. So if we go down to script here, this is going to be dollar sign zero, but if we want to access that form again, go dollar sign one. So in, in practical use, uh, I really have, have never gone further than dollar sign one, um, just because it gets pretty unwieldy. Um, but it's, it's useful to know so that when you do need it, you have it available. Um, dollar sign zero does definitely get used quite a bit. So dollar sign underscore is another magic variable that is uh, filled with whatever the last evaluation was in the console. So uh, if I just type in hello world and press enter, uh, hello world will be evaluated as a string and uh, will be the return value for that line that was executed. So dollar sign underscore will be hello world. So these magic variables are extremely helpful uh, for when you wanna test out things very, very quickly in the console. You don't need to necessarily just be assigning things to, to variables and then, then executing there. You can just kind of string together a bunch of commands uh, that operate on the last evaluation um, using the dollar sign underscore. So next up is the uh, console function monitor events. Monitor events is, allows you to pass a, uh, an element to the function and it'll add event listeners to every event that it can listen to uh, that'll uh, just console log the event type and the event value. So it's a good way to basically just get a rundown of what's happening with an element uh, very, very quickly. And I don't know about you, but when I'm dealing with events in the DOM, one of the first things that I end up doing is tying event listeners to an element I'm, I'm worried about uh, and then console logging the event just to make sure that things are actually wired up properly. This is a shorthand way of, of making sure that you are targeting the element that you wanna be targeting and you're, you have access to the events you wanna have access to. So let's go to the email input here. Type in monitor events. We'll use the dollar sign zero. And now, look, nothing, nothing, nothing in the console, nothing in the console, nothing in the console. Holy moly, we got lots of stuff in the console. We got pointer moves, we got mouse downs, we got clicks, we got mouse ups. If we're in here typing, we got keyboard events. So much data. Dude, it's like magic. This is, this is awesome. I use this very, very frequently, uh, especially when getting started with an application, when you're wiring things together for the first time. Uh, it's, it's a very, very handy way to, to kind of jump in there and see what's going on. 
It's also very useful for when you've set a breakpoint deep inside some application code uh, and you have access to an element handle somewhere in there, but you don't know exactly what is happening with that element. You just monitor the events on that element and then wherever that element flows through the application, you'll have all these hooks into all the events. Very, very awesome stuff. Next up, we have get event listeners. This is a function that just does what it says. It gives you all the event listeners that have been registered for a particular element. So if we do a get event listeners on our element, which is still dollar sign zero, uh, you'll get a huge list of uh, events here that all have listeners, uh, which might seem kind of strange because we have a very simple application. But this is actually because we have just used the monitor events uh, function on that element. So all of these listeners here are just uh, listeners that were added with that um, monitor events function. So if we go here, we can see that the monitor events is just console log event dot type and the event value. So if we want to get rid of all these and focus more on our application, we just do unmonitor events dollar sign zero. Now get event listeners dollar sign zero. We get the one event our application is listening for. Pretty cool, huh? These are the magical ways that allow you to kind of uh, weave and poke your way into uh, applications that you're developing or applications that are in production um, so that you can get a better understanding as to what's really going on there. All right, next up, we have monitor. So monitor is very similar to monitor uh, events. It hooks into a function and logs every execution of that function with uh, the parameters that were sent to that function. So let's see if we want to monitor our validation function, just monitor validate. So now every time our key up event fires, uh, we'll see a console log. Now the, the object parameters that are logged are not as useful as monitor events, and I'm not sure why that is. Uh, this is one of those things that would be much more useful if it gave you a little bit more inf information as opposed to just a two stringed uh, uh, value. Um, but this is what we got right now. So I saved the best console API method for last, and that is just simply debug. Debug takes a function, and whenever that function is executed, it will pause execution and place you where that function is. So there is a trick to this one that is extremely valuable. So uh, let's say we, de we want to debug validate. So we just type in debug validate, and then when we go here, we uh, have a key up event. It'll pop us to the first possible point of a JavaScript execution and uh, stop execution from there. Pfft, awesome, right? But there's one other really cool thing here. So first, let's undebug our validate method. Now let's debug some native code. So let's debug, let's see, uh, we're still, so let's uh, get, make sure we're on our input again. So let's debug the add method of the class list for the element in question. So this is native code. Uh, if we try to break within native code, it's not going to work. But let's see what happens here. Let's key up event. Bam, we stop right when that function would have been executed. So that function has not actually been executed yet. It has just about been executed. So debug is a really, really great, great way to, uh, to first off debug any function uh, reference that you have accessible um, in the console. So if you're debugging and you're stepping through the, the scope, all those variables you have access to can be used with all these methods. Uh, but it's also great to kind of, um, observe and break on any native code that's accessed. So if you're trying to figure out what is touching something, uh, you can just debug on it and bam, you get it. And there you have it. Those are our console API tips for this episode. Uh, there are a whole lot more out there. I'll put a link down below to, uh, to the rest of the console API documentation. Um, it's definitely worth staying abreast of this stuff uh, because it does change fairly regularly. And the stuff that's being developed and added to DevTools is literally for you. So if you're not um, checking out the what's new or, or checking out the uh, videos that Chrome developers um, put out or well, I mean things like this, then you're missing out on really, really cool stuff that's gonna make your life better every single day. So that's it. 
thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you next time. Uh, as usual, if you like this stuff, there's a, probably a subscribe button somewhere floating down below um, or a like button if you found this content useful and uh, a notification bell if you want to be notified of this stuff in the future. So that's it. Thank you very much. See you next time. So one obligatory method that I feel like I must go over because uh, there are a lot of people who still haven't come across it is the copy method. Now this is not part of the five, um, but it's, it's, it's still an important one to know if you have not been aware of it. So the copy method is just copy and whatever is in here gets copied to your uh, clipboard. It's great when you want to copy JSON.